Hello everyone and welcome back. We're here for the back nine of round number two at the 2023 Huck Central benefiting the Mary Sunshine House. We're at the locomotive layout myself along with Joey Buckets doing some work and man anything stand out at you on the front nine so far from what we've seen? Yeah um, a lot of good putts from Dylan, Aiden. They're feeling good but other than hole nine from Dylan that was interesting there he was looking really confident and then rare miss we'll see if we can get things going here on the back nine holes to go we're going to see this course for the rest of this round and then of course we have championship Sunday on this same exact course same layout everything will be the same and hole 10 370 feet and this isn't uh well this isn't any easy walk in the park either no no, this hole is really hard. This is the second hole, this hardest hole on the day. Way downhill. You need to keep the disc turning all the way down the hill, and there's a drop-off right behind the basket. Yeah, and that's going to curl up at the very end, but overall, a really good-looking shot here by Aiden. He'll have a decision to make as to whether or not he wants to go after that or if he wants to just lay it up because, like you said, the drop-off directly behind the pin. And just off the mark there for Clint. Says he needs some chalk. I'm not sure if the humidity is getting to him. Oh, and <laughs> going all the way past Christian, just blasting all the way deep. And now he'll have an uphill comeback. You can't say that happens too often here. No, not super often. That's going to be rough there from Dylan, though. But I, I see a lot of people just throw it too straight and hit the left side trees, mm. and then they either kick left bad or they kick down to the fairway. Dylan just trying to get a bogey. Yeah, at best. He's on the left side here, and he still has a lot of work to do. Wow. So far, bud. Wow. You know what? I'm proud of that shot. I know he's going to take that bad. He's proud of that shot. <laughs> he was he was second guessing his forehand skills, and he even though he went long with it, he said he was still happy with the release. So now Dylan is just trying to pitch back and put himself with a look, and that's going to be for bogey. But man, right side, left side, and then finally a little bit of a putt. Aiden yeah, was trying to trick me, saying that he was going to go for that. I yeah. mean, I'm not going to call him a big uh, big old baby, but I would have liked to see him go for it. I said, you don't make the highlight reel by laying up. Yeah, I was in a similar spot to uh, Aiden <laughs> there, and I was I stepped up to it, and I wanted to, like, do my full routine and then, like, fake my card out and just laid up. <laughs> but, yeah, I just laid up. It's, it wasn't worth it. You need at least 10, 10 feet closer, maybe. But uh, Dylan making a solid putt. That's going to be back-to-back -back bogeys. He opened up so strong on the front. And then now, uh, just pardon the pun here on this course, I was going to say him running into a freight train. Back-to-back <laughs> -back bogeys. Yeah, that was honestly a pretty good bogey after the tee yeah. shot from Dylan. Yeah, and even the second shot wasn't that impressive either. So the fact that he's still able to get a four, I guess, a little bit of a small win there. And we head from one of the toughest holes on the course to now the third easiest hole on the course, hole number 11. Yeah, hole 11 is just straight uphill. All you have to do is hit the gap with a straight disc and give yourself a putt. Not a lot going on here, but if you do miss the gap and kick either left or right early, it can be really rough. Just yeah. because you have to throw so far uphill scrambling through tight woods. Maybe on the, somewhat on the short right side. Christian will have a look, but it's going to be a long one. I really like that shot from Calvin. 
Throwing something flippier there. Heisering through the gap and then having a flip up. Dylan kind of going for a similar thing, but he, he pulls it a little bit right. <laughs> well, he, you called it earlier. You said all of his misses feel like they've been just a tad low. And that time he said, I'm, I'm trying to correct for it. And he was high with the effort. And Dylan is high on his effort there as well. So not able to erase either of the bogeys he's just picked up in the last two holes. Hmm. <laughs> and I kind of feel like that's the first time I've seen Aiden's putter hit the ground. You know, almost every time his putter's been in his hand, he's converted. You know, he had maybe a questionable one on on two uh, that maybe he could have made, and then obviously he laid up the previous hole. But it's pretty much been in every every time he's stepped up. And uh, Clint's going to step up and take a birdie. And we're seeing the score is quite competitive and pretty close overall. The 16, the 13, and the 14 all here by Dylan and, uh, and crew. Now we head over to hole 12. Hole 12, par 4. You really just want to get up near this road or past it, ideally. There's some OB left on this second shot coming into the green. The green slopes from left to right slightly. But this is one you kind of just want to step up, hit the gap, and get a birdie. Wow, that's a big drive. Yeah, that's, that's crazy far. We've seen some really, really awesome shots this round. And Aiden kind of matching him somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking, too, of how the road is somewhat a, a landmark here that you're thinking, like you just said, is, is for a decent shot. And these guys are just blasting past it like it's no problem or playing off of it. Yeah, this gap is not the easiest. And if you miss it, you still have a chance to kind of throw a second almost hero shot to get your birdie. So the birdie isn't out of the question if you're short of the road. And you saw that one was a little bit on the high side for Dylan, but he still filtered through, giving him a look. And now this is a tiny little gap. Oh, wow. And he puts it right through. A little higher than I wanted, but <laughs> you did it, though. Yeah. Yeah, that was a pretty good shot there. Dylan a little low and catches a little root and... He's going to be edge of circle. And I was thinking as I was watching that, I wasn't sure if he released it low on purpose or if he's kind of playing into the ground to kind of just have it skip to the basket or, you know, kind of take a, a, a left to right little bump off the uh, ground to the basket. But now that I see it again, it looks like he just flat out released it low. Unintentionally. Yeah, Clint so far up the fairway that he's jump putting for his <laughs> birdie. That's pretty impressive. That's a tough spot there from Christian with the low ceiling. Yeah, so Dylan, after his look, isn't able to convert. And that's going to be probably pretty frustrating because he was in a perfectly good position to get up and down for a birdie. And as easy as it should be after that drive. Nice work by Clint. You know, coming into this round, what, what are you thinking is typically like a, a good to great score? Uh, give me a ballpark. Ballpark, I would I would say 6 to 10. Okay. 6 to 9 maybe. I know with the changes, it definitely makes the course more difficult. Maybe a stroke or two more difficult. Hole 4 playing very hard.
Got a couple tap-ins here. Yeah, so we're seeing Aiden at this point about five under for the round. Clint three under. Dylan four under. He was as many as six at one point and then gave a couple back, uh, back on nine and ten. And now we go to the blind hole 13. Yep, hole 13. This hole isn't really hard to three, but it's really hard to two. Mm. So backhand Anheuser is a really aggressive play if you're trying to get the two. But if you have a big forehand, that can also give you a putt. And I think the forehand's a little bit safer just to, you know, give you a long look. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, when it like hits the wire. Yeah, no, that was. I didn't know, but there was a lizard oh. in a cricket, and the cricket was boing. The lizard jumped off that little log. Yeah, Clint, catching the the uh, power lines, they're kind of in the way on this hole. I think more than any other hole on the course. Yeah, and I was thinking maybe it was the third or the chase card that I saw somebody else connect with a power line, and just thinking it, it's crazy how they do come into play. So you can push OB deep if you go too far. And I think we're going to see this shot coming by Christian, who just absolutely smashes the drive. And I think these trees actually stop him from going into the neighbors and going too far and finding out of bounds. So that actually is a fortunate stop for him. Yeah, I don't really think about the OB on this hole off the tee, just being so far. But if you've got the arm for it, you could find it. And Clint kicks off to the hard right side, so he's not quite in the out in the open as you'd expect most shots here. No, but he he got <laughs> far enough through that he has a really big opening there. And he makes good. Yeah, contemplating with his caddy as to what his best approach was going to be, so he's really really happy with his approach there. And now Dylan's got a look, long look for birdie. Mm, good effort. A little high. It just feels like Christian's been everywhere but in today. Yeah, it's just not been his day so far, but... You can see on the last hole he was smiling, walking off the green. So happy to see he has a good attitude. And Aiden, one of only 12 birdies. I think we have about 93 people in the field, and there was only 12 birdies on the day, and he was one of them. Was, Clint's going to be happy to walk away at the par. This feels like a bonus. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Like an easy three all day should be if you – if you screw something up, but to get the two, you, you got to put a pretty good move on it to get it to turn over and then hold the line long enough. Check out the whole lineup at ClashDisc.com. And I'm just going to quickly say, I've seen just about every disc golf commercial ever invented. I've been around disc golf media long enough. The two Clash commercials they currently have and uh, are, are on the coverage are two of my favorite commercials that I've seen made in disc golf media. So big shout out to those guys. And I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring the coverage. I, I genuinely enjoy the commercials and the... Uh, the, the marketing they're going with. So nice work by Bobby and crew. And a late tree for Aiden. Kicks him back, but still is going to have an obstructed putt. Yeah, he kind of went low skipper route there. And Clint kind of going a little bit higher and just parks it. That was a great shot. Making it look easy. Clint going, I know, with a mid-range. Pushes the right side, but he sneaks all the way through into circle one. Kick four. Yeah, the left side rough here is definitely worse than the right side. 
So you'd rather go two straight than to uh, cut it off, saw it off early. That's going to be way back for Dylan, who's been on a little bit of a stall through these last four or five holes. Yeah, he started off super strong. Oh, and okay. I guess he's back. <laughs> that didn't take long. Not happy with it. <laughs> no, I was going to say, and, and understandably, this is one of the easier holes, so he's frustrated more so with the drive, but hey, still two on the scorecard. It's going to look just like Aiden's two. Wow. Two great putts there. I love how stoic Aiden is. and Just like, uh, you know, I'm expected to do that. It's... Uh, I'm cool like that. Yeah. There's a there's a beautiful confidence in that for sure. And Christian, even from short range, just not able to connect, and his struggles continue. He's going to be left out of the birdie party as well. And now we had yeah, 15. Hole 15. This is one of the signature holes here, just because the power lines it's wide open it's the most open hole on the course i would say it's a par four sometimes some tournaments like to play with the mandos through the towers but no mandos here so i would think most players are just going backhand highs or right side there's some ob left and i think the road that aiden's kind of going over now is ob mm. okay there's like a service road or a parking lot road or something on that of that nature over there I'm not 100% sure it's OB, but I know for sure left side there is OB left side, and the hill kind of slopes down that way. Okay, yeah, so you definitely do not want to be left. Oh, bud. Yeah. Let's go. I just wanted to go even wider than Aiden. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that that's exactly a good idea. <laughs> I know, of course, he's joking a little bit, but you don't need to be that wide. Dylan going way high, and Heiser flipping and turning it. I kind of like that, because then you're not messing with the trees on the right. And you're not going too far left messing with the OB either. And Christian going big Annie and hitting the tower. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to say I don't love that play. Because it brings the, the OB into play, possibly. If you don't turn that over enough... You know, OB goes the entire length of this fairway, and he's making up with a really good recovery shot here. And I overheard him talking about how during practice he went with the big Annie, and that was his best shot. But I feel like you're probably getting a three if you play this with even a, a mediocre tee shot and a mediocre approach. There's just so little to gain by going Annie unless there's some kind of left-to-right wind off the tee, and there, there really wasn't. And maybe I'm crazy, um, but I just... I don't think the payoff is there when all of that right side is completely open and there's not a, out of bounds over there. I mean, you saw three less than impressive shots over on the right side and none of them even thought about OB. Yeah, and the rough over there on the right isn't bad at all. I mean... Damn, son. <laughs> Clint again uh, impressing himself with his forehand. Yeah, forehand plays really nicely into this this sloped green. And that's a great shot from Dylan, but it kind of needs to sit. It's kind of rolling away. <laughs> that doesn't seem fair. No. A near-perfect approach, as you're saying. The forehand plays in nicely. Yeah, that was a great recovery shot from Christian there. Yeah, that's the fact that so he's this far. close, yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I I was almost nervous for him as he was throwing that, lining up the Anheuser off the tee. I just don't see enough benefit in it. Yeah, I agree with you there. And this really not that difficult of a par four. I mean, 750 probably plays closer to maybe 700. Yeah. You know, as it slopes the entire way. You have the big wide open tee shot. I, I'm surprised to see our competitors not doing better with it. Mm. It averaged 3.94 on the day, so just barely under par 
out of a 93 person field. Yeah, I think the green is kind of hard to, to putt on being so open. Dylan leaves it a little low. That was an unfortunate roll away on the approach. Yeah, it feels like he, sh you know, was kind of robbed of a birdie there. Yeah. And speaking of which, not that I, I'm calling for any on Championship Sunday, but I did see, I remember a couple of years ago, seeing a couple of nasty rollaways on this particular green. So might be in the back of somebody's mind out there. Aiden cleaning up for the par. Yeah, in fact, I, I would have bet you $10 that we'd see at least one birdie from our lead card on that hole. That's kind of surprising. Now we 16. Yeah, 500 feet downhill. It probably plays more like 440, if I had to guess. Um, you want to get over this creek if, you're, if you want the birdie, because the creek is probably 60, 70 feet away from the basket. And... There, short of the creek is also safe, so it's not an island. You can play short and play for the par if you want to, but I don't expect anything. Yeah, and this is just really straightforward. I mean, if you've got 400-plus feet of power, you know, you're definitely going after this one, and that looks like it turned over and just went too straight for Aiden. Yeah, there's that big bushy tree on the right of the green that's right at the edge of the circle that... You don't really want to be behind because it just collects your disc. Okay. Okay. It's really trying to just hit that tree. That's a good shot there from, from Clint. And this is also a new T pad as well. Did it they used to be on the left side? Used to be on the left side. There was there was two T pads. There was one short right and then there was one long left. And they really just moved, the, I guess, the long left one up here to the right, mm. further up the hill. So I think the hole plays a little bit shorter, easier than the left tee pad. All right, so four shots all over with no problem. And actually, all four have a look. I'm not quite doing this angle justice. That tree's a little bit more in play than it even looks. And he had a really good hyzer around it and just doesn't get that one to drop. Hangs it too high, too high and off to the right side. Christian hunting for his first birdie of the round. Low again. <laughs> okay, okay. A little high there, but it's in. Dylan back to six under for the round. Aiden sitting at seven under for his second round. Clint trying to get to five under here for the round. Well, self-assessment. And you can see blessed with an absolutely gorgeous day out here when we got here around two o'clock for a 224 start just slightly overcast 70 degrees not even hardly a a breeze to speak of and it's you know the sun has come out now and it may be warmed up 10 degrees but absolutely gorgeous out here yeah couldn't ask for better conditions really yeah just and the, and I was checking weather a few days earlier, and rain was in the forecast. Not so much, though. Moving on to hole 17. Playing the par 3 tee pad. There is a par 4 tee pad, but I do believe that was for the freight line. So we're sticking with the same hole here. It's 345. It probably plays more like 370. You kind of just want to hit this gap hit the hillside and bounce up. You can really throw fairway all the way up to distance driver. And this is just on a frozen rope all the way up to just about five feet from the pin. 
So no putting will be required here on 17 for Dylan. It's so interesting because I, I feel like when someone goes first on a shot like this and they park it, it kind of almost sets the tone for like, well, yeah, he just did it. And, of course, you guys are all professionals. And, you know, park job is, is no big surprise. But to see someone just lace it. Yeah, it kind of makes you feel like you have to do the same thing because you just saw the line. Yeah, so. yeah you, you should be able to answer. And we saw Aiden's leak off to the left. That one by Clint hits and then kicks out into the fairway. He says he's going to make the putt. We'll see if he's right about that. And then that looks just like an early release, pretty much right out of Christian's hand. So now a little work to do. Yeah, being short left is tough. <laughs> There's just so many trees, and you have to go up the hill. And that's well done for Maiden. And I can't say this enough. that That is such a smart shot. He wasn't trying to put it two feet away from the pin. He was just trying to hit the gap and then leave himself, you know, within 10 or 15 feet of the basket when it actually bent a little more to the left. Uh, and he wasn't trying to bend it left. He was just trying to throw it straight so that he hit the gap. And there's something to be said about that. You don't have to park every single throw. Just get it to where you're comfortable putting from. Yeah, having a stress-free tap-in is... Very good, and it feels good. You see your disc, like Dylan's disc. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm five feet. But if he was 15 feet, have a little uphill 15-footer, I'm sure he'd be just as good. And that's a solid recovery putt for par. Clint was standing down just for a moment to wait for everyone to tee on 18. Chase card uh, just got done teeing on 18, so... I can applaud the manners there, try not to distract anyone. Dylan's in for the easy birdie. And these rounds are a little bit shorter than uh, what we're used to maybe out on the Pro Tour, but uh, that doesn't stop me from picking up a bag of jerky and getting at it. In fact, I think it's jerky break time right now. My name is Garrett Gerthy, also known as Double G, and I'm the founder of Double G Craft Jerky. Double G Craft Jerky is an awesome snack when you have a hankering on the course. You need a little something to pick you up out there so you can really get after a drive or finish on a putt and capitalize. When you're playing a disc golf round and you're hungry and you don't have a snack on the course, you start to lose focus, you start thinking about what am I going to eat for dinner. With Double G Craft Jerky, that's not a problem. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Also, leave a comment and uh, you have a chance to win some jerky as well as we're on 18 and wow what a tight little gap off of this tee shot yeah this is actually a new tee pad because they're building this like new road on the right for a new entrance and they changed the tee pad and yeah the gap is really tight and that's going to be trouble for dylan that's that's no more than 10 maybe 12 feet for a gap if even that i think Wow, yeah. Aiden just laces it. Yeah, you can hear him say, let's go, as it goes through the gap. So once you basically get to right around where Aiden does, that's pretty much like the general landing zone on a decent tee shot. And then uh, you have a pretty much a wide open shot, and Clint's just loving this. Because that's actually as good as Aiden's, if not a little better. Yeah, Aiden skipped a little bit left. We'll see what he has over there. Because he didn't really get to the middle of where the second gap is. Oh, and Christian finds pretty much best spot. And as I'm watching Dylan here get ready, all I'm thinking about is how quickly strokes could add up on your final hole of the tournament, right? Like, here on 18, you don't hit the gap. There's just so many things to do. Oh, no. Wow. So that's his third where he'll make no more than 12 feet of progress, and he's still going to have a somewhat obstructed throw from there. Aiden having to go to a knee there, and the card loves it. He goes a little deep, though. <laughs> he's talking about that being one of the best forehands he's ever thrown, though. 
So he's he's happy with it, and that's going to at least give him a look for birdie. Oh, Dylan with a huge recovery shot. I mean, that shot was longer than his first three combined. Yeah, if you miss that gap off the tee, you, I mean, you got to do something good to get your par. Priority number one is just hitting that gap and then seeing what you got. And look at this, Christian. Yeah, Christian's drive was so good that he decided to just spike Heiser it in there, make it simple. Pushing close to about a three-hour round. We'll expect to see the same on Championship Sunday. Couple backups out on the course. Not too bad, though. <laughs> Clint's effort is short, but still very much in birdie range. So after going deep on his second, Aiden has this to come back and cans it. Well, time to raise the bar. If that's the coolest thing you've ever done in your life, we're, we're ready to raise that bar. I know you just turned 18. Hopefully there's bigger stuff to come. <laughs> Clint with a solid birdie to finish out. And speaking of finishing out, any parting shots, anything to say before uh, we close things out here, Joey? Nothing really to say. I mean, I'm just thankful to be here. Thanks for having me on, and thank you to everybody watching. Go make, leave a comment. Leave a comment so you can get some jerky. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Christian gets his first and only birdie of the round, does it on the last hole. You've got a sponsor, what, in Castaplast? Any other sponsors you need to Castaplast, shout out? Castaplast, Down South This. I have a coffee sponsor, Choco Prano, back in Athens, Georgia. Love it. Awesome. Well, everyone, like, share, subscribe. Get to that 100,000 mark. And uh, we'll have Championship Sunday coming at you guys. We're going to have a great battle. Joey, you're going to be on the chase card, and we're going to see some of these guys that you just saw during this round right here on our lead card. 20 under we've got a tie up at the top alan wagner aiden scott and others are battling i'm the disc golf guy for joey buckets we'll see you guys tomorrow